Creatine is an incredibly important molecule that is used in the body for energy metabolism, and vegans and vegetarians really don't get any of it through their diet. Now, the question is, is this a problem? My name is Natalie Fox, and I'm a registered dietitian, and I recently did a TikTok where I said this. So creatine is not essential, which means that we actually make all the creatine we need. And I got a lot of comments about that. Some people saying, is this true? This doesn't sound true. Other people saying this is false. And some people in the middle saying, well, it's actually more complicated than that. And by not including the nuance in this short creepy video, you're being dishonest. And while I will readily admit that that statement is overly simplistic, it, it's also not false. And so today I figured I would give creatine the airtime it deserves and dive right on into the nuance. Specifically, what we're gonna be talking about is what creatine is, how much you need of it, what current research shows are the benefits of supplementing with creatine and whether or not vegan and vegetarians are deficient and should be thinking about taking a supplement. But before we get into it, I want to give a quick thank you to all the people who hounded my comments section on this topic because you hardcore enabled my inner research gremlin to completely hijack my executive function for several days. <laughs> I did a ton of research for this video and I learned a lot of really fascinating stuff about creatine that I didn't know before. And so for that, I thank you because it felt fantastic and I hope you guys find it as interesting as I did. Without further ado, here is everything that you need to know about creatine. So to start off, what is creatine? creatine is a molecule that is primarily stored in your muscle tissue, although to a lesser extent it is also stored in your brain and a few other organs. One of creatine's primary functions is to supply the body with a very quick source of energy in the form of ATP that can be used when certain tissues are experiencing high energy demand that cannot be met through normal energy metabolism, so glycolysis. So basically when carbohydrates are not enough, creatine steps in to fill the gap. That is a big part of why creatine is such a popular topic in the fitness world, and that is because if you have a large amount of creatine stored in your muscle, that means that you can sustain a high level of muscle output for longer before running out of fuel. And it can work similarly in the brain. It appears that when demand in the brain is higher than what our energy stores can accommodate for, or when the mechanisms that supply energy to the brain are impaired, such as in the case of ischemic stroke or heart attack, creatine again can jump in to fill in that gap. So you can think of creatine as being like an emergency backup generator in a way. So where does the creatine that we store in our brain and muscle come from? Excluding creatine supplementation, we largely get creatine from two places. One is from meat and the other one is from the creatine that your own body makes. You can find creatine in very small concentrations and a few other foods. However, the contribution that those foods are going to have towards your overall creatine stores is pretty minimal. Creatine is not an essential nutrient, meaning that we don't actually need to be getting it through diet because our body can produce enough on its own. Because of this, there is no recommended daily intake for the amount of creatine somebody should be getting in a day. That said, a lot of people do actually get a substantial amount of the creatine their body uses from diet. So the average person tends to store about 120 grams of creatine in their body, depending on their muscle mass. And this level can jump up to top out around 160 grams with supplementation. And it's estimated that about one to 2% of that bodily store is gonna be utilized throughout the day and would need to be replaced either through creatine synthesis or through diet. Studies on the general population, so again, these are people who are not plant-based, shows that in general, folks make about one gram of creatine a day and may need to have an additional one gram of creatine through diet in order to replace creatine losses. Now, the reason why I point out this was done in a general population and not a vegan one is because how much creatine we make can be influenced by how much we're getting through diet. Unfortunately, there are no studies investigating the difference in endogenous creatine synthesis between vegetarians and non-vegetarians. However, there are studies looking into the mechanisms of creatine synthesis that do show that this is the case. And here's what we know. The first step takes place in the kidneys where glycine and arginine, two amino acids, are combined using an enzyme called AGAT. The resulting molecule is then transported through the blood into the liver where a different enzyme, GAMT, then adds a methyl group on from a derivative of methionine, a different amino acid, in order to create creatine. Research has shown that when consuming creatine elevates plasma levels of creatine, the expression and action of AGAT is downregulated. Because of this, it can be concluded that when you eat creatine, the amount of creatine your body produces for itself will decrease. This fact is a common justification for why people might do what's called creatine cycling in athletics. Basically where you take creatine for a while and then you pause for a period of time so that the amount of creatine that your body produces will increase. The thought is that that will give you an extra boost in creatine that will give you an advantage. However, studies show that it is probably not necessary. And the reason for that is because the amount people supplement with is so much higher than the amount that we would expect creatine synthesis to drop. So if people are taking an excess of creatine anyway, having a little bit less being produced in the body isn't really going to make any difference when it comes to muscle creatine stores. Outside of taking creatine, there are a couple of other factors that can influence creatine synthesis that might be a little bit more relevant to plant-based eaters. One is it's really important to get enough protein because you need to have three different amino acids, 
glycine, arginine, and methionine in order to produce creatine. And so if you're not getting enough protein in your diet, then you might not have enough of these amino acids in order to produce creatine. Now, getting enough protein on a plant-based diet is not really all that challenging so long as you're eating enough calories. However, one of the biggest mistakes I see people make when they're adopting a plant-based diet is that they unintentionally undereat. So make sure that you're eating enough, basically. The second thing that can affect your body's ability to make creatine is your B12 status. So B12 is required to prepare methionine for its role in creatine synthesis. So if you have a B12 deficiency, then you again might see a decrease in the amount of creatine that your body is able to produce. So while it is irreputable fact that our body does produce creatine, the million dollar question is, are vegans and vegetarians, two diet groups that don't really get any creatine in their diet, are they able to make enough to overcome the fact that they're not eating it? This can be a little bit of a tricky question to answer. So let's kind of go through the facts. First, we do know that people who are following a plant-based diet do have lower levels of creatine in their blood than people who are following an omnivorous diet. We also know that when people are following an omnivorous diet, when they transition to a plant-based diet, that their plasma levels will drop. This study shows that when you take non-vegetarians and you put them on a vegetarian diet for six months, that their plasma levels will drop by about 46% in the first three months and then will stay stable after that point. Additionally, multiple studies have shown that people following a plant-based diet tend to have about 10 to 15% lower levels of creatine stored in their muscle tissue than omnivorous people do. Interestingly though, studies show that diet doesn't seem to affect brain stores of creatine. Vegetarians and non-vegetarians have similar levels of creatine in their brain and supplementing with creatine doesn't appear to alter those levels in any way. But it's important to be specific about the fact that having lower levels doesn't in and of itself indicate that there's a problem. As with any lab value, there can be a range of normal and some people can be on the lower end of normal, whereas other people can be the higher end of normal and their outcomes are gonna be the same. So answering whether or not these lower levels indicate a deficiency is going to take a little bit more information. But before we dive into answering the question of whether or not vegans and vegetarians are at risk of a creatine deficiency, I think it's important to talk about some of the research done illustrating the benefits of creatine supplementation. That way we have a very full and complete view of the context. So let's start by talking about the benefits to athletic performance. There is a lot of research on this and very little of it is done actually in people who are following a plant-based diet. So for the research done on the general population, what the studies really seem to suggest is that there are certain types of exercise that benefit from creatine supplementation and other types of exercise that really don't. Consistently what all of these studies show is that creatine is not really that helpful for endurance athletics or aerobic activity, but it is helpful for resistance exercise and anaerobic activity. So if you are a cyclist, a runner, a swimmer, a soccer player. Again, studies on all of these categories show probably not as much benefit in creatine supplementation. But if you are a strength athlete, then there is a demonstrated benefit. And specifically the areas where these benefits are seen are in muscle growth, muscle output, and endurance. And this makes total sense when you think about what it is that creatine does. When your muscle is under a tremendous amount of strength and requires a tremendous amount of energy, having more creatine in your muscle tissue is going to give you some extra energy so that you can pump out a few more reps. So what do studies looking at creatine supplementation in plant-based eaters and non-plant-based eaters show? Really, it shows that there's not a ton of difference in terms of strength and endurance at baseline between the two groups, which I think is important to point out because if creatine is absolutely necessary for athletic performance, what we'd anticipate is that the group that has lower muscle and plasma stores of creatine would perform worse at baseline than the group that has higher. But that's not something that any of the studies have shown. When both groups are supplemented with creatine, they both improve in terms of muscle mass, in terms of endurance, and in terms of power output. The difference difference is that while both groups improve on these metrics, the people in the plant-based group improve more. And some people on the internet will use the fact that plant-based eaters get an extra boost from supplementing creatine as evidence that they are deficient. However, again, I want to emphasize that just because you see a benefit doesn't necessarily mean there's a deficiency. So another really good example of this is testosterone. People have varying levels of testosterone just naturally based on genetics and having more in your body, whether that's because you're taking testosterone or because you naturally have higher levels, has been shown to have a benefit in athletics. But taking testosterone and seeing a benefit doesn't indicate that you were testosterone deficient before. But to summarize, creatine supplementation, regardless of what diet you follow, does appear to have a benefit for athletics. So if you are someone looking to build muscle, it might not be a bad thing to include, whether or not you're vegan. In addition to benefits for athletes, there's also been a good amount of research done on older adults who are experiencing age-related muscle loss, as well as people with muscular degenerative diseases, both of which show small but statistically significant benefits in muscle endurance and muscle tone with the addition of creatine supplementation. Now, none of these were done in plant-based folks, so it's hard to say if there's going to be a difference there. Next 
let's talk about the benefits of creatine supplementation on cognitive function. And this is where I learned the most and where the most interesting research on creatine is happening. And I want to preface this whole section by reminding you guys that there's no difference in the amount of creatine stored in the brain between people who are following a plant-based diet and people who don't. So when it comes to cognitive benefits, just like as we see in athletics, it appears that creatine supplementation only benefits certain aspects of cognition and not all of them across the board. Specifically, you see benefits with short-term memory and also you see benefits in mental fatigue levels for people who are completing complex, high energy demanding tasks that are done under time pressure. Supplementation did not appear to affect word fluency, decision or reaction time, or the ability to sustain attention. When researchers look at the differences in cognition between plant-based eaters and non-plant-based eaters when taking a creatine supplement, the results largely mirrored what we saw in the studies on athletics. And that is that at baseline, there was no difference in cognitive function between plant-based eaters and non-plant-based eaters. And also that supplementation appeared to benefit plant-based eaters more. Interestingly, the omnivorous group actually saw a decline in cognitive function with creatine supplementation. However, it's important to point out that that finding is really not consistent with all of the other research that's been done on an omnivorous population. So I would take that with a grain of salt. It's also important to know that there have been very few studies looking at plant-based folks in cognition with creatine supplementation. I could only find two studies and only one of them actually compared plant-based eaters to non-plant-based eaters. So at this point, it's not fair to make a conclusion that plant-based folks are going to get an additional benefit beyond what omnivorous people would see with creatine supplementation. In fact, there is a new study coming out that is a placebo-controlled, double-blinded, crossover, randomized control trial that was done in a much larger population comparing vegans and vegetarians with creatine supplementation and they show that there's no difference in groups. Now this study is brand new and has not gone through peer review process yet so take it with a really massive grain of salt. The reason why I bring this up is just to illustrate how small the body of research is on this particular area of creatine supplementation and so it's going to be a while before we have enough data in order to make any kind of conclusion about the possible additional benefits of creatine supplementation for cognition for plant-based folks. Now beyond general cognition there's actually been a lot of research that's being done on creatine supplementation and mental health. What is so fascinating about this research is that some studies have suggested that the amount of creatine stored in the brain of somebody who has a disorder such as OCD or bipolar can predict how severe their symptoms are. And the hypothesis here is that people who have certain mental health conditions where they're in a high state of arousal, a lot of the times that being in that mental state requires a tremendous amount of energy. And so creatine supplementation can help fill that gap and normalize mood disorders. Creatine supplementation has also been shown to have a benefit in people who have dementia or cognitive decline. And the proposed mechanism of that is pretty similar. So with most types of dementia, some of the key hallmarks are reduced blood flow to the brain, reduced glucose delivery to the brain, and reduced energy metabolism. And so if your brain has has less available fuel, then it's going to have less energy in order to complete cognitive tasks such as recall and memory. So somebody who has decreased blood flow and glucose transport to the brain may actually be relying more heavily on creatine stores in order to fulfill the energy need that their brain is demanding. So having more of that can give them more energy to complete these cognitive functions. Additionally, a consistent finding among all of the research on cognition and creatine supplementation shows that older adults over the age of 65 tend to see a much bigger benefit in creatine supplementation than younger people do. And this is probably the point where people who are following a high meat diet might jump in and say, hey, well, one of the best sources of creatine in the diet is red meat, so red meat is good for the brain. But I want to point out that a really large risk factor for the development of Alzheimer's disease is having a high saturated fat diet, which you're more likely to have if you're eating a lot of red meat. So it could be counterproductive because having a lot of saturated fat can increase the likelihood of having diminished blood flow to the brain because of arterial plaque buildup. So is creatine supplementation helpful? Yes, it appears to be particularly helpful for people who are strength athletes, people who might have increased cognitive demands, such as people with mental health conditions, people with dementia, or potentially students studying for finals week who need to really rely heavily on short-term memory. Does all of that mean that people who follow a plant-based diet are deficient because they have lower plasma and muscle levels and because they also appear to benefit more from creatine supplementation than other diet groups? The first thing I wanna point out here is that if the evidence of having a benefit proves a deficiency, then basically everybody who's not not taking a synthesized creatine supplement would have evidence of deficiency because just about everybody will see some level of benefit at least in one of these areas. The second thing I want to point out is that the amount of creatine people need to take in these studies in order to even see a benefit is really large. Like larger than what any omnivore would feasibly get in their diet without having some other health consequences pop up. Depending on the study and the benefit they're hoping to find, the general supplementation levels between 5 and 20 grams of creatine. For athletics, the standard maintenance dose is between 5 and 10 grams of creatine. In order to reach that minimum number of 5 grams of creatine through your diet, 
you would have to eat about three pounds of beef a day. And other meats are lower in creatine concentration than beef. So if you were hoping to get it through chicken or other things, you'd have to eat more than that. Research consistently shows that eating that much meat, particularly red meat, does have health consequences. So I think it is important to think about the amount of creatine you would need to take in order to see these benefits as being a therapeutic dose, not necessarily one that's required for the maintenance of general healthy function. But putting all of that aside, I think it's really important to be specific about what a deficiency is if you're claiming that plant-based eaters are deficient in creatine and need to get it through diet. In order to prove that somebody is at risk for deficiency in something or that a nutrient is essential and needs to be obtained through diet, you have to prove that there is an actual harm in not getting it through diet. Proving that there's a benefit of getting more is not the same as proving that there is a harm of getting less. So here are some examples of nutrients that you can be deficient in and what happens when you don't eat them. A B12 deficiency can cause anemia and neuropathy. A vitamin D deficiency can cause rickets. An iodine deficiency can cause hypothyroidism and goiters. A creatine deficiency causes... What? What does a creatine deficiency cause? Now, there are a few genetic conditions that can cause an actual creatine deficiency, so that does exist. All of these conditions are caused by a genetic error that impairs creatine metabolism and transport. Other than that, I couldn't find a single instance of a diagnosed creatine deficiency, and I couldn't find any evidence that there are any harms linked with having lower creatine levels in the plasma or in the muscle. As I mentioned earlier, the primary benefits to creatine supplementation appear to be athletic performance and specific aspects of cognition. However, plant-based eaters and omnivores do not differ in performance at baseline, despite the fact that they have different levels of creatine in their diet. We also don't see long-term consequences when it comes to cognition for folks following a plant-based diet. In fact, we see the opposite. We do see benefits in terms of a reduction in dementia risk. All of this taken together, there is no evidence to support the idea that vegans and vegetarians need to be getting creatine through their diet in order to avoid a health consequence. While we may not make enough to fully and completely unleash our athletic potential, we certainly make enough to support our body's daily needs. I think that the reason why we conflate what is needed for optimal performance and what is actually necessary for good health and bodily function is because there is a societal fascination with the self-made energizer bunny with a six pack. We put those toxic grind set and lifestyle influencers like Tim Ferriss up on a pedestal and pretend that that is what health looks like, while at the same time pretending that anything less than being 100% optimized is illness. But that archetype is incredibly new in our society and we need to stop looking at people who use their body as their career as examples of what we should all be aspiring to. Getting an edge in the gym and living a long and healthy life are not the same thing, right? Like missing out on the extra two reps or the 5% of muscle mass you could have built in the gym if you had optimized every little thing about your lifestyle is not the same as wasting away in poor health. So to summarize, if you have specific goals that might be benefited with creatine supplementation, do it. There's no evidence that there's any harm associated with creatine supplementation. But if you're somebody who is not looking to get massive gains or who needs to absolutely optimize their short-term memory right now, you probably don't need to worry about creatine. Well, I hope this video was helpful or at least interesting. I found it interesting. If you have any other questions about creatine or if you have another nutrient that you are curious about, drop that in the comment section below, give this video a like or a share, and I will see you in the next video.